going to do a little quick review over a few of my recent Doug bottles that I just recently pre-cleaned. This is a green Cleclo Club bottle. Still needs a little soaking. There it says registered trademark Cleclo Club. And it has the little figurine on the bottom there. Letters A and B. Pretty cool. I actually forgot that I dug this. So there's one recent Doug bottle I just recently cleaned. Like I said, these are probably going to need to get soaking. Yeah, that was really hard rust right there. So, anyways, there's the Cleco Club. Here is the only full milk that I have dug in this location I've been digging recently. And it's just a slick slug plate, one pint milk. It's totally intact, but yes, it needs some very deep cleaning, soaking. But it's a slick, which is that round slug, and nothing on the bottom. Well, I just thought it was cool because it was really the only milk I have pulled out of this dump. All right, there's the slick, slug plated one pint milk. Here is a pretty cool little amber slick cork top, pop cork top, I guess you can call it. Chemical bottle. And the only numbers is on as 14G3 on the bottom. And it's a slick as well. A little water still in there, but uh, I think it's a two piece mode, you call it. It's all the way down the center there. I'm not sure what was in here actually. But I decided to save this one. I liked it. I like my ambers. Alright, there's a slick amber chemical. Yet another amber chemical bottle. A little bit awkward oddball shape. But it's the Kebler, I guess I'm pronouncing that correctly. Kebler, it's kind of a odd rectangular like shape. It's not in the best condition on the very back bottom. It's got a bruise right here, but uh, a little fracture on the top there. But it's very thick, very thick glass. And uh, you can see how small it is. Well, not really small, but short but uh it says kepler all the way around and on the bottom it says welcome chemical works w-e-l-l-c-o-m-e -L -L -E, looks like it welcome chemical works there's that bruise again but there's a kepler bottle Here's a nice looking early screw top amber jar, which it also has a little damage on the bottom, but uh, I kept it anyways. And uh, it does have a name on it. On the bottom, Laurelia. I cannot pronounce that name correctly, forgive me. Laredol, whatever you call that. <laughs> I cannot pronounce these names. I don't see that often. Forgive me on that. But anyways, that is that. So a nice, besides the fracture on the bottom, early screw top, chemical bottle, jar, and there's that. And another amber bottle, which I really like this one. It's another amber chemical bottle. It is pretty much slick all the way around, but on the bottom, it says McKisson and Robinson's New York. 
the Kissons and Robinsons out of New York. No number on it. And still a little interior staining on the inside. I'll probably suck this one again as well. But this is not too bad of a chemical bottle. No damage on it. Look at those bubbles. There's a couple bubbles in here. But yeah, there's a pretty cool amber chemical. The Kissons and Robinsons out of New York. Another chemical bottle. Dr. Hayden's. It's a nice aqua color besides more interior staining that I need to soak. And yes, it does have a bruise right there. It's been there for a while. It's an old one. But I really like this. I like my aqua bottles. Dr. Hayden's. And on the bottom, it says... Vibrim, how you pronounce that? Never heard of that. Vibrium compound. If anybody knows what that is, leave a comment, please. And again, I apologize about me, me mispronouncing these names. But there's that, the Hayden's, Dr. Hayden's aqua chemical bottle. Here is another aqua bottle. Yes, it still has some staining in it, needs soaking. But it's a tonic bottle, a woman's tonic bottle. Specifically says woman's tonic. Anyways, uh, Carlo the women's tonic out of Chattanooga, Tennessee. The Chattanooga Medicine Company. Pretty nice tonic look, tonic bottle. Again, needs uh, a little sucking for the inside. A little rust still in there. But there is the woman's tonic with the Chattanooga Medicine Company. And here is yet another aqua kind of colored tonic bottle. This is the Zeron Iron Tonic. Zeron Iron Tonic. And it says that on both ends, actually. And yeah, it needs uh, a good soaking for the rust stain. But other than that, it's a decent looking bottle actually. Yeah. So that's the Zeron Iron Tonic Bottle. Here's a nice, clear, large size pharmacy bottle. It's slick, yeah, but uh, it's a good size and uh, I really liked it. And uh, no numbers, it's totally slick. But there on the front is probably where the paper label was. No damage. Still some water in on the inside. It's pretty clean, it still can probably use a little soaking. But uh, anyways, there's a slick pharmacy bottle. Here's a cool little one. I believe I'm pronouncing this correctly. Bunty, Bunty, Bunty. B U N T E. Bunty. Out of Chicago. You can barely see Chicago right there on the bottom. The camera can't focus on it right now, but it says Chicago. That's the only place it's like embossed. And yes, it's got some a little damage on the top. But, uh, I just thought it was a cool looking bottle, jar, food product, I guess. I need to look at that name and find out exactly what that was. I'm thinking it was some kind of food product of some sort. So there's a Bunty out of Chicago. Here is a pair of a three fluid ounce 
pickle jar, I guess. Pickle jar or some kind of food product of some sort. Um, in most cases, a lot of these are just junk, but uh, a couple I just decided to save. Just thought they were cool. So the three fluid ounce size, and uh, they are, of course, still I got some rust stain, mainly the one on the right has it. And uh, there's nothing on the bottom. But three fluid ounces. So there you go, the three fluid ounce pickle jars. Yeah, another slicker pretty much, but it's just a cool jar. It had a paper label right here. It's pretty much like a mason jar with all the little square design all over it. Nothing really on the bottom, but the Illinois mark on there, I guess. Glass maker. But uh, anyways, yeah. Probably takes just a regular mason jar lid, but uh, I love this pattern right here on this jar, so that's why I saved it. So there is the square section, I guess you can call it, slick mason jar. Here is one of my recent soda bottles I've dug up, dug up, and. Uh, it's just a plain clear orange crush from 1920 patent date July 20th 1920 and that's what it says on both sides there and this one's made out of America's Georgia and uh, it's got a little lip chip on the top there but this is the fullest one I found so far, the Orange Crush, there at this particular dump I've been. And uh, so there is that, the America's Shorter Orange Crush, the short one. Here's a very small size clear, well not so clear now, it still needs a cleaning. But uh, anyways, small clear, drinking glass no marks on it whatsoever haven't seen yet if this has any magnes in it or not if it glows i'm not sure i will do that later on but overall it's in cool shape very cool shape a good marble storage glass Pretty cool, clear drinking glass. And I believe this is like my favorite drinking glass that I've dug up so far. It's kind of a very, very light bluish color to it, kind of. It's mostly clearish bluish color. It does have a little edgy on the top there, but uh, other than that, it cleaned up pretty nicely. It has these lines design on it. Pretty nice looking glass. Another, yet probably a marble storage glass. And there is a mark on this one. If anybody knows what that is. Huh. SNL. I'm not sure what that is. LNS. Hmm. I'm not sure what that is. Let's see if it can read through here. Can't really tell, can you? LNS. So what is LNS? If anybody knows that, let me know. So, maybe a restaurant or something? Yeah. All right, there's an L&S drinking glass.